All right, so we're back for part three in this uh, d beam deflection calculation using the double integration method. And so far, we found using a couple other boundary conditions here, C that C1 and C2 were zero using these two boundary conditions, that the displacement at zero at the fixed support is zero and the slope at the fixed support is zero. And so I took the liberty of rewriting the equations that we have here. So this is, you know, for for the slope function uh, for segment one, and then slope uh, displacement function or the last equation of the elastic curve for x1. And these are my two equations with the with the constants already introduced for us here. Bam, bam. All right, now we want to apply the other two boundary conditions uh, where the two functions meet, where x1 and x2 meet. And here, what we have are, I just rewrote the boundary conditions for us. So I, I'm just gonna apply these one at a time. So I'll start with this theta one equals theta two here. And uh, I'll have here, I just wanna plug and chug straight up EI here. So EI of theta one X one is equal to, let's see here, uh, you know, it, it, here EI of theta one X one, or at five meters is equal to, this is negative of EI at theta two at five meters right here. And you can see that the EIs, cause they're constant and well, they're gonna be the same. They just cancel out right here. So I have here, this to solve for C three now is, and so I'm gonna go down here to the other page here. This will be five halves kilonewtons times five meters squared minus 37.5 kilonewton meters times five meters is equal to this right here. Oh, I don't want to forget the negative. I oh, almost made a big mistake. It's this negative right here, this negative times minus five meters cubed over six times kilonewton per meter plus C3. And, and then I can just straight up solve for C3 right here. And when I run my algebra, I just get that C3 is equal to 145.833 repeating kilonewton meter squared. Okay, so there's my C3. And and now I can go to the second, the next relationship and use apply this boundary condition here. And let me use uh, uh, let me use like black again here for that last boundary condition. And I'm just gonna go straight up again. Look, check this out. EI V1 of X1 is equal to EI v2 of x2 and so these ei's just cancel and here this oh got to put the five meters in there that at five meters at five meters bam right here and so this v1 at five meters the displacement at five meters is five six kilonewtons times five meters cubed minus 37.5 kilonewton meters divided by two times five meters squared is equal to minus five meters to the fourth divided by 24 plus C3, which was 145.833 kilonewton meter squared times five meters plus C4. And now I just solve for C4 again here. So after some, you know, just straight up math, right? You know, I get, I got, I just calculated these numbers out from these groups right here. Uh, I, I forgot this, this is, there should be a kilonewton per meter here. Just make sure, just so your units work out. And, and so now I've got these and I just add or subtract. And so I'll get C4 here is equal to, equal to negative 1067.71-ish kilonewton meter cubed right here. So now I've got all my constants and and finally what I can do is go back and plug and chug into my constants over here. And uh, um, and let's see, I've already got equations for this and so here for this one right here, I would just put in C3 is, uh, what was that? That C3 was 145.833, 145.833 kilonewton meter squared. And same thing here, this would be that 145.833 kilonewton meter squared. And then C4 would be negative 1067.71, negative 1067.71 kilonewton meters cubed. And, and you know, the, the units might look a little 
fishy, right? But but you just have to remember this EI is sitting over here on the left, and this has units of kilonewton meter squared, meter squared here. So when I divide this through, I'm going to get units in this displacement function. I'm going to get units of displacement or length, and and that that'll work out fine because all these are kilonewton. Everything here, every term here is kilonewton meter cubed. Right? So I'll just end up with a meter. And then same thing here. If for slope, I should have no units. And so this is kilonewton. Every term here is kilonewton meter squared. And this is kilonewton meter squared and sitting out here. So to get the actual values at any specific point at x2, let's say, you know, I just got to make sure I divide by ei. Right? OK, so hopefully that was insightful and, and useful and uh, you're using it. But just remember those boundary conditions. All right, enjoy. Take it easy. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.